so it's Friday, it is half one, and today is the day that I'm going to start drawing all the time. So I've been wanting to start a new video series for a while now, and I knew what kind of content I wanted. And I had a lot of suggestions from you guys that were pretty much the same as what I had in mind. I wanted to keep the same sort of casual, informal, but also at least somewhat valuable nature that I had to my sketchbook series. Um, it's been great to see how me sharing my experiences and things I've learned and mistakes I've made that can help other people and just start a discussion to where we're all sharing our experiences and learning from each other. In terms of the format of these new videos, I'm not 100% sure yet. I think that's where your feedback will come in. But for today, I like watching videos where people draw and talk, so I am going to draw and I am going to talk. So in terms of the drawing all the time thing, uh, at the moment I'm really pushing this draw every day mantra for myself. I'm trying to make art a solid habit in my life. I've said this before, but the key to improving and evolving as an artist is to create as much as possible and not rely on being inspired to be able to create, um, rather letting the constant flow of productivity and creativity be what fuels the inspiration. And to do that, the habit of drawing constantly has to be as entrenched in you as something like brushing your teeth. And I thought, what a better way to motivate me to commit to this than to share that journey of consistent art making with you guys and just talk through how I'm doing it, how it's going, what issues I have and how I deal with them. This can be like my big brother diary room where I come back after a week of trying to draw as much as I can and let you know how it's going, show you what I drew, a bit of the how and the why. I've also been really keen to show more of the behind the scenes of the art process, art making process and show more of how art fits into real life, how I find the time. So that's what we're doing. That was a long intro. I feel like these videos are gonna be such a departure from my usual style of concise and straight to the point video. Um, that's something that I've probably been the most nervous about, just like this free form rambling. A lot of you might prefer the short and sweet, but I guess for that you can watch my speed paintings. This is gonna be my chatty, chatty, not knowing what I'm talking about kind of video. So what I'm doing at the moment is I'm kind of playing catch up in this sketchbook. This is my Stillman and Burn sketchbook. It's uh, one of their Zeta series. I've been using it as like a visual diary, the same way that I do my travel journals. So documenting my days um, with pictures, with drawings and writing, and also just using it for my usual doodles and um, studies and conceptual stuff. But my aim has been um, to do a drawing a day based on something that happened that day or the previous day. But in all my umming and ahhing about this new series and um, going on holiday and working in my moleskin, I've been generating the ideas for this sketchbook but not had the time to record them and, mi and missing loads of days in between. So at the moment I'm sort of playing catch up, filling in the gaps and that's what I'm doing today. So today's page is in amongst the beginning bits and bobs. This week was actually linked back to my moleskin. So there are pages in that sketchbook that lead into this one for me. And this was a week of being in a major creative funk. It was actually way back at the end of March. Um, I had decided that I wanted to start drawing more consistently, but I was struggling to draw at all. The weird thing is I felt productive or motivated um, I had the energy to do things and the desire, but for whatever reason, actually doing the things and art things in particular felt really daunting. I do occasionally have different kinds of funks, but as far as they go, this was a pretty decent one because I was still getting out of bed and doing things. Well, I spent a lot of time in bed, but that's just what I do. But because I am kind of used to that feeling, I know more, of, more or less how to deal with it. The first and most important thing is to not be like mad at yourself. It's really frustrating to want to do something, but at the same time feel like there's something holding you back or you're holding yourself back. Um, but getting down on yourself about it, throwing blame and judgment, it's just never gonna help. I kind of thought, okay, this is how I feel. I'm not loving it, but I can deal with it. So 
thought of drawing at that point, for whatever reason, filled me with dread. I tried to feel like less of a bum by getting on with other kind of art related things, so art business things like packing orders, responding to comments, stuff like that. Also tidying. Keeping a tidy space for me just welcomes calm and an openness to do things and keep going. And that was the start of it, being gentle with myself, acknowledging how I was feeling, what I could and what I didn't really feel like doing. And then the next thing is, if you find yourself afraid or hesitant to make art, don't let that stop you from being creative. If there's something in you that really just wants to do something, even if it doesn't involve putting a pen to paper, keep that spark alive in any way you can. For me, at this time, um, my boyfriend's birthday was coming up, I had got him a lens for his camera and I had the bright idea that I would make a heart-shaped gift box to put it in so that he wouldn't know what it was straight away. I've never made a heart-shaped gift box before, by the way, I never thought I'd be that kind of person. <laughs> But I was in a making mood. Even though I didn't want to draw, I wanted to create. And that's important to recognise when you're in a rut. It isn't always an overarching thing. Sometimes it is, but be open to exploring other avenues. Don't write yourself off and say, well, I'm not gonna do anything because I'm not in the mood or it'll turn out badly. So anyway, I made this box. It didn't turn out great. I got glue everywhere. And yeah, I am always in bed. I definitely should spend more time at my desk, but when I am feeling a bit fragile or anxious, I'll always at least give myself that. I'm allowed to stay in bed as long as I'm doing something. You've got to go easy on yourself without letting yourself get away with murder. You've got to be good cop and bad cop to yourself. And that really helped. It was a lot of fun. I felt accomplished and I kind of thought, okay, maybe potentially I can do some drawing. I'm just setting up my laptop so I can have my reference images to look at while I draw. Okay. So yeah, I got to a point where I thought maybe potentially I could do some drawing. Still in my bed and still actually in my moleskin. I grabbed the first pen that I could find which was this pink fine liner and I just kind of started doodling and it was pretty horrible. Like, um, I mean, it doesn't look great but it also wasn't like an immediate breath of fresh air experience. I don't know if this is something that people can relate to. I think we all kind of assume that people who do art and love art should love every moment of it, and especially if you're just doodling for the sake of it. But the reality for me, and I'm sure other people, is that it can kind of be torturous at times, and it sucks when something you love isn't bringing you the joy that it normally would. I'm just gonna interject quickly and say, I hope this isn't too much of a downer and like, I'm fine. I hope it's okay that I'm talking about things that aren't necessarily the most positive. This is just me having a chat. Um, I think it's just maybe a bit more raw than what I would usually do. But yeah, if we look at the stuff I did while I was just trying to draw for the sake of drawing, I have my moleskin here and you would have seen it in my sketchbook tour. Um, yeah, I can just remember, oh here it is how I was feeling when I look at this. But I was trying, I even watched this Blender video on YouTube, something like Seven Habits of Highly Effective Artists. Took notes here to kind of make my YouTube procrastination a little bit more worthwhile. But yeah, and even in this mess, see, here's the reason why I always look back and appreciate pushing myself to just put pen to paper. Because out of all this mess, there's just this, like, this random wheel down here that I drew. I like that. I feel like that is usable. Um, and then the next day, again, I tried to just put pen to paper because I felt up to it, um, had a different outcome. I ended up just writing this, so I didn't actually do these drawings on that day. But I'm not going to show you what I wrote up close, hopefully you can't read it. I don't even know what it says, it's the kind of thing that I wrote, I think, just to get it down. I have no real desire to read that over again. But I can say that it helped. I had allowed myself the satisfaction of being able to say that I'd done another page in my sketchbook. I achieved something. 
You can literally practice drawing straight lines. I do that sometimes. As long as you congratulate yourself and appreciate yourself putting in the work, you're going to be moving in the right direction. And gradually that heavy feeling kind of lifts and you feel a bit more able. So that's what this is about, um, the blind contour drawings as I came out of the rut. Great way to ease back into drawing more creatively. No pressure, a bit of fun. Occasional spark of something like this face down here looking down. I like this one a lot um, and down here I even wrote feeling much better back in a stride of sorts, creating and out of bed, those are the important things. So just to recap the points so far in getting out of a rut, um, by the way I have a little cheat sheet down here of my talking points so I don't get too off course. So acknowledge the feeling without judgment, uh, do what you can slash do something slash do anything and explore other creative avenues and ease back into it. So the next thing, now that we're done with that, um, that also ties into, ties into, ties into my writing how I felt bit, the next thing is to get it out. So however you're feeling, just try not to hold on to it and let it fester inside you. If you're frustrated or disappointed in yourself, your art or whatever, you can write it down, but I do think it's better to talk to someone. It doesn't have to be a deep, soul-bearing chat. You don't have to get completely into it. Just kind of saying out loud, yeah, I'm kind of frustrated at the moment. Um, I'm a bit stressed. My art isn't turning out how I want it to. My creativity feels stunted. It helps with processing how you're feeling and cycling that feeling from rolling around in your head. Um, out of you and into the world. A lot of people who maybe aren't into art and stuff like that might not necessarily understand, but I don't really share those feelings to get the comfort or validation. I just like having a bit of back and forth with someone, maybe changing my perspective. I talk to my mum a lot, again, not in depth, but just, you know, it was a tough drawing day today. I couldn't really manage to make anything I liked. And she always has the typical, like, mum advice, but just the act of me saying how I feel to someone else lifts a weight. And it was actually after talking to Ozzy that I got my final little spark that bit that you hope and wait for when you're in a creative slump, where it's like the fog clears and I want to draw right now and I can't wait. Um, it was his suggestion that I would say is the biggest contributor to getting out of my rut. Obviously you all know I'm not huge on going out and about. I'm a proper homebody. And whenever I watch any kind of advice video where one of the tips is like, go out and have a walk. Like deep down I know that it would probably definitely help but at the same time, that could really just, I could really just not. <laughs> but yeah, I was kind of at that hurdle of like, I do feel fine now. I'm feeling positive. I'm, I've got my life together. I'm not down about my lack of creating, but there's still no spark. Like, it stopped raining, but the sun hasn't come out yet. And he goes, well, why don't we go to the Tate or something? Um, the Tate Modern Gallery here in London. And my first reaction genuinely was like, mm, I don't know if that's going to inspire me the way that I need inspiring, but yeah, I guess we can go. And then like within a day of that conversation, so before we'd even gone, like that was it. I was excited again about art and I had ideas. I was looking into what they had on at the gallery, thinking about what bits I wanted to see and also just thinking about being out and about by the river in the fresh air. Just the anticipation itself was a breath of fresh air and it was that final push to get back into things. And that's when I drew stuff like this and this just having fun feeling like I had a bit of purpose again and a few days later we had a great day at the gallery I did some doodles while I was there and afterwards as well
actually have a bit of history with the Tate Modern. Um, back when I was at uni, I was studying English and Spanish. I love languages, I love learning languages and literature as well. Um, but I didn't love university. Um, for whatever reason, I felt like this just isn't it. This isn't what I'm supposed to be doing with my life right now. And this is before I'd even really considered pursuing art as a career. I have a blog post on it um, that talks about it in a bit more detail, so I'll have that linked below. But yeah, um, that time was essentially the biggest rut in my life. I felt stuck. And my campus, um, I was at King's College by the way, it's a great uni, lovely uni. But my campus was just across the river from the Tate. So when I'd inevitably end up skipping lectures, because I really wanted anything but to be there, I'd have a wander, go to Starbucks, walk across the Millennium Bridge, and I guess just be drawn to the gallery. Just wander around in there. And it was a little pocket of peace and quiet, and it just made me feel calm and grounded. I don't know if it's just the Tate that does that, I'm sure it isn't. I think it was just the nearest thing to me at the time. Just being in that kind of space is a breath of fresh air. Galleries and museums and even libraries and arts, like big art supply shops. And they just have this quality to them of like something so impressive and stable and secure. And you just finally have room to think. I guess that the final tip for getting out of a rut, the most difficult for me, but I think the most worthwhile, make plans, go out and seek inspiration. Don't wait for it to come to you. Give yourself something to get excited about. So just to go over all the things one last time, it's acknowledge how you're feeling without judgment. Do what you can slash do something slash do anything explore other creative avenues, ease back into it, talk it out, um, let it go, and then make plans and give yourself something to get excited about. So for the rest of the week, um, I ended up actually going out a bit too much. Uh, that'll be something I think I may talk about in a, another video, um, like finding the balance between uh, your social life and drawing all the time, finding time, finding time for it basically. I hope that me sharing my experience might help some of you guys that have maybe been in the same kind of funk. Um, I'd love to know if anyone has their own tips for that. I'd also love to know if anyone is still watching. And I'd love to get your feedback on this style of video. Obviously it's early days, so I'm all ears. But I've really enjoyed talking to you all and sketching. Um, I can't wait to do it again. Um, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye.